that's so good. So over the past few days, one of our favorite parts about Bulgaria has been the food. We've really enjoyed Bulgarian cuisine. So today we're taking a deep dive and showing you what kind of food you can find in Sofia, Bulgaria. First up we have breakfast. We're going to a place that I can't pronounce, but we'll put it on the screen here. We're off to get some banitsas. This is our first time trying Bulgarian breakfast, so let's go check it out together. Banitsas are a traditional pastry dish prepared by layering a mixture of eggs and yogurt in between cheese and phyllo dough. It's usually baked in an oven. Got the banitsas. It can be served hot or cold, sweet or savory. still warm. I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to eat it. I got a fork, but I think I'm just gonna take a bite. Mm, oh my god. A nice flaky dough. Oh, it's crunchy on the outside. Soft in the middle. And then just like a mild white cheese filling. It's lovely. Very tasty breakfast. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely see how that would be like either sweet or savory. Both would be good. Yeah, I want to try a sweet one. Look at that. It's still <laughs> piping hot. Oh, yeah. How close are you going to get? So this cost us less than three lev, probably around like a dollar thirty cents. Very filling, very good, very hearty. I almost think we go back and get another one. I mean, they're so cheap and so good. Yeah, I ordered one, but it almost looks like two servings. It's just like the delicate feel and the butteriness of it with this flaky dough, but it does get very flaky and very kind of messy. So that's why I've got all these pigeons swarming trying to get my my crumbs. But yeah, look at how delicate this is. Look at how thin and flaky. So buttery, so good. That was so good. I think we're convinced we need another. I mean, it's right around the corner. Less than three left. Come on. Gotta, be, gotta get one more. So this right here, it's all we need. This is our ticket to more Benitza. So yeah, we obviously love this place. I wish I could sound it out and pronounce it so I could give them a shout out, but we'll have to do that in post-production. So right here, that's the name of this place. I have no idea in the moment what it's called. <laughs> No, we did not get another kind, we got the same kind because okay. it was just too good. Did see the sweet one. Maybe we try that tomorrow before we leave, but I found out a little bit more about how the system works. The way that they price this out is by weight. So she cuts some off of like a big circular uh, bonitza and she, she weighs it and that's how we know how much it costs. So it's never gonna be an exact. This time it was 347, the last time it was 286. So it's all about the weight. What is my life gonna be like without bonitza? This is gonna be my last few bites. It's probably a good thing we didn't discover this earlier because we would have been there multiple times a day. So good and so affordable. And I think that when people are just walking by, either if they're like on a break from work or whatever, they just pop in and get some. It's very easy to eat on the go. We've actually had a Serbian dish before called Burek. And this reminds me a lot of it. I think it's pretty similar except for like the actual shape. Burek is more of a pie and this is more of like a croissant. But as far as like flaky dough and cheese, that's totally what it is. Shout out to Three Brothers in Milwaukee, best Serbian restaurant I've ever been to. It is interesting noticing little differences like that between food that's from different countries in the same region. Serbian, North Macedonian food, obviously very close to where we are. It's interesting how sometimes it's the same idea, but a different flair. So if you remember from our 48 Hours video, we were talking about Ivan Vasov, the famous Bulgarian playwright with that fantastic mustache. Well, this is the Ivan Vasov Theater. So a lot of the biggest uh, plays and productions here in Bulgaria, they take place at the Ivan Vasov Theater. It's really cool how this theater is kind of situated right in this park that we're in. You can imagine people kind of just hanging out before the show, and then there's a lot of bars and restaurants to hang out after. Uh, so it would be a cool place to see a play, I think.
Sydney found a very interesting book. There's one word, iPod. <laughs> We're stopping in for some lunch at <laughs> your guess is as good as mine, but it's a traditional Bulgarian restaurant in a wine cellar. We know that much. So these are common Bulgarian appetizers. This is like a chili and yogurt sauce that you dip the bread in. And then this is like a whipped feta with also some greens in it. These kind of like creamy dips are very popular for a little appetizer. So this is kind of like a pita bread with cheese and garlic and spices on top. So this is what you use to dip into the cream sauces. Mm. The garlic. Nice. So just to recap, we're eating a bread with melted cheese and dipping it in a sauce made of whipped cheese. This is a lot of cheese going on. Our mains have arrived. I've ordered the Shopska salad. It's similar to a Greek salad. Instead of feta, they use Bulgarian cheese. And I ordered the roasted lamb. This is St. George's way, so it comes with some saffron rice, a yogurt sauce, and some greens on the side. It's absolutely delicious. Also some spices on top of the lamb. Dragana Tavern, that's what it's called. We did actually learn the name of this restaurant. This is the Haji Dragana Tavern. Definitely highly recommend. I love these slowly cooked meats where it kind of just falls off the bone. Great food. So Bulgarian food is delicious, but very, very filling. So we are on a walk to burn off some of the calories and we're gonna go check out some more landmarks. So every time we've thought we've seen all of the most beautiful Eastern Orthodox churches in Sofia, we just stumble upon another one. This one's called Sveti Sedmokis Lenitsi, and we've also heard there's a really cool interior.
But we think school just ended because we see a lot of students kind of just hanging out, getting some snacks. Uh, this place was called Makitsa and Coffee. So this is called a Makitsa. It's a fried donut and it also has cheese and jam on top of it. There's a couple of different options for the cheese and for the jam. So we got blueberry and cream cheese. But you can also get feta. I think it's a little more traditional if you get feta and then fig jam. All right, let's try it. Well, that was a delight. Salty and sweet. Perfect little treat. <laughs> oh my god. The dough on the outside is perfectly crisp. But the middle, it's still very soft and delicate. The dough is not sweet at all, which I like. Yeah, it's almost more of a savory treat. I it's would a say. very balanced. Um, it's a very balanced flavor with the sweetness just coming from the jam. Um, oh my god, mm. that is so good. You can also get Makitsa for breakfast. That's an impossible choice, choice between Benitza and Makitsa. Benitza and Makitsa, both of them were amazing. Oh my god, do they taste good. It's been a few hours since our Makitsa, and now we're heading to another traditional Bulgarian restaurant called Moma. So absolutely no Bulgarian food tour in Sofia would be complete without this place. This is where we came when we first arrived after our long train ride. So there might be a little factor in that we had not eaten all day and we were starving. But when we came here, this food just lifted our souls. It was so good. And so we are doubling back. It's something that we rarely do, but this place deserves it. This is so good, right in the heart of the Sofia Center, MoMA Bulgarian Food and Wine. Here we go again. favorite appetizer called Dolmas. This is a stuffed grape leaf and it's served with like a dill yogurt sauce. It's also topped with lemon, which is very citrusy, very bright, and the dill yogurt sauce is incredible. It's just such a pleasant flavor. We also ordered some beans. Oh my god, this is so hot. Just what you need on a cold day. So the beans are served with these sautéed mushrooms and they're just so good. So I ordered the duck leg that is prepared in dough. It was so amazing how he kind of plated this up. The dough is right here, it was what was on top. So he cut the dough around and then put it on a separate plate. Then removed all the meat from the duck leg and put it within this kind of stew of tomatoes and vegetables and spices. So this was actually how... Oh, sorry. <laughs> And it's combined with this stew that's made of tomatoes, vegetables, spices, and it all kind of just goes nicely into this pot. So you eat the dough with this, you kind of, I guess, cut it up and then put it in here. This was part of the Bulgarian king's menu for a long time, since 1940, in the Bulgarian king's private kitchen. This is how we like to have this prepared. And this is prepared the authentic way. I can't wait to dig in. Max is eating like a king, and I'm eating like a grandma. This is the grandma stew. It's fully vegetarian based, even though I'm not vegetarian, but it just sounds really good. Tomatoes, onions, and a block of this Bulgarian cheese that keeps showing up. You can see here, it's also served in a bread bowl. I'm gonna miss this. Okay, so taking some of the dough first to dip into the sauce. Mm. That alone would be good. I haven't even tried the duck yet. So as you can see, slow cooked, so tender, fell right off the bone. 
so flavorful, like nothing I've ever had. You definitely have to like duck, because it's very ducky, but duck. it is delicious. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shot. That's not. So we are legitimately heartbroken that we have left MoMA and we will not be back for the foreseeable future, but what a place. We're devastated. That is such good food. Such good food, such great service. The atmosphere is awesome. It is next level. We're so. legitimately sad to be leaving. It's so <laughs> good. It's, uh... So this is our first stop when we come back to Sofia, whenever that may be. Absolutely. First, second, and third stop. <laughs> so as far as the pricing goes, this is a little bit more expensive than most of the restaurants you're going to see in Sofia. But in my honest opinion, I think that extra charge is worth it. It's definitely very, very high quality food. The duck that I had was slow roasted, so it just fell right off the bone and just soaked up all of that broth. This is like high quality food. So mine cost about 29 lev. So if you think about that in USD terms, it's probably around like 14 or $15, but that is something that I would be absolutely happy to pay like even $22, $25 for, especially if you know, you're know you in a bigger city in the US, that's what you're gonna be paying. It's still a pretty big discount from that point. So a lot more expensive than most places you're gonna see in Sofia, but honestly, that extra cost is probably worth it. And how crazy is this? We sat next to an American couple. They were definitely two adults in academia, one was studying geology, the other was studying, well, the other is a- Cold War historian. Yeah, a Cold War historian. So it was amazing to pick his brain about the ongoing situation here in Eastern Europe. How crazy is this? They were from- Minnesota, and De Iowa. Dubuque, Iowa of all places. He said he graduated from Hampstead High School in Dubuque, Iowa. We're in Sofia, Bulgaria, and we're running into Midwesterners. How awesome. crazy is that? So great. For our first trip to MoMA, when we first got here, they gave us a complimentary digestive shot. That's something that you see, it's very common in Eastern Europe to have a digestive after the meal. And this time we wanted it again. It was like a cherry liqueur, it was a sipper. It was a really sweet uh, shot that we were kind of just sipping on, but they ran out. They ran out this time, so we didn't get to try it again. Tragically. But they brought us, I guess it's called the Radica? Radica? I don't know. But it's a grape, um, I don't think it's liqueur, it's, it's some kind of alcohol, and it was very strong. So instead of the sweet sipper, we got like an actual shot. But the digestive thing, you'll see that a lot more in Eastern Europe. 